Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Good morning. Oh, it's chilly in here. We it's probably they adjusted it. We'll need to call them and tell them to bump it up a little. Yeah, now that the weather changed. Yeah. No, it's yeah. I would find out what the temperature said. It. It's cold. Yeah. Right. It's definitely like an ice box in here. All right, good morning, everyone. Court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May have the appearances, please. Yes, good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Woodshell appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Okay, good morning, sir. Your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes. He is wearing a suit, I believe a tie, can't quite see around the monitor, and a mask. Your objections noted for the record. The appearance, as I've just indicated, stands. Um, I do want to advise the parties uh, today that uh, one of the jurors called in this morning and was not feeling well, and I did excuse that juror. So uh, that will mean at the appropriate time um, when the court selects the alternates by random lot, uh, I will only be selecting three. I believe that was juror number 35. All right, uh, anything uh, preliminary before the jury's brought out for the continuation of testimony from the state? Uh, is the audio on, Your Honor? This, uh, no. No. Okay, thank you. All right. Sorry uh, about that. The only thing uh, housekeeping to clean up, Your Honor, is Exhibit 15, which was uh, the victim map that we had first introduced through Detective Casey and uh, you admitted it subject to uh, proof of all of the events that are depicted on the map. We believe we have now um, reached that point where it can be admitted in full. I do have a poster sized copy of that exhibit that's also marked as Exhibit 15. So we have Exhibit 1 is the uh, map of the downtown area. Exhibit 15 is the uh, what we have termed the victim map or the parade um, <coughs> victim map. That's uh, a hard copy of that as well. And then I have a third one that I'll be introducing uh, later today or tomorrow. Uh, but we just wanted to clear up on 15 that uh, all of the information on that map has now been testified to, Your Honor. Um, I did admit it subject to uh, the full foundation. Um, any position on that, sir? Uh, to it being a, to it being admitted. Yes, fully received. I had received it subject to foundation, uh, and the states set forth its position. Do you have any position on that? Yeah, I object. I object to it. I don't see the relevancy. All right, your objection is noted, uh, and Exhibit 15 uh, is received. Um, I believe I told the jury it was received subject to that foundation, but I will advise them that it's been received by the court when they come out today. All right, and then uh, one other housekeeping matter. Last week, I believe it may have even been on Thursday, we had a discussion with Mr. Brooks outside the presence of the jury in which several broad topics were discussed. One of them was Mr. Brooks had indicated he did not have a pretrial offer from the state. Uh, we would ask the record to reflect uh, that afternoon. We did provide him again with a written copy of our pretrial offer and that was placed with his materials on the table. I just wanted that in the record, please. 
uh, I object to that. I don't. Uh, if it was with my paperwork, I have I haven't seen it. It was specifically one of the papers, sir, that you left in the bullpen area that on the next morning, on Friday morning, I made a record of providing back to you. So it was provided to you twice. Well, I haven't seen it. You want to put the offer on the record, Attorney yes. Opper? Give me one second, Your Honor. So what's the significance of it being on the record? If um... okay. So that you are fully aware of it, sir. It was provided to you, um, but... Uh, you're indicating you haven't read it, so I want them to make a record of it. The significance would be, I suppose, if at any point you wanted to change your plea, you could do that based upon the pretrial offer. Well, in any event, I accept for value and return for value that document whenever I'm, whenever I see it. Attorney Upper, go ahead. Sorry, it's just taking me a second to retrieve it here, Your Honor. Your Honor, this would be a perfect time to address the subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven on the record and must be Mr. proven Brooks, by the I, prosecution. I issued, we are not going to address it. I issued a written decision last week. If you disagree with that, then you can take that up to a higher court. But I issued a written decision. I'm not addressing that any further. It has yet to be proven on record. Mr. Brooks, my written decision is the decision of this court. Has it, been proven, go ahead. has it been proven on record that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it has yet to be proven? Mr. Brooks, your position is simply not correct as a matter of law. I explained that. Then prove it and lawfully I by the law. Decision. You might be confusing subject matter jurisdiction with venue, which is why I commented on that last week. Absolutely and not. There has been evidence received regarding venue. So I'm going to turn back to Attorney Opper. She's going to, to make a venue, record of the pretrial offer. I'd ask that you not interrupt. Thank you. Your Honor, the offer that was dated July 5 of 2022 reads as follows. Plead to counts 1 through 67 in the information. The penalty enhancers on all counts will be struck. Counts 68 to 83 will be dismissed and read in. The state will recommend six consecutive life sentences on counts 1 through 6. The state will recommend unspecified prison on all other counts. The defense is free to argue. This pretrial offer was conveyed to his prior counsel on or about the July 5th date. And there in fact had been a earlier offer as well that had been relayed uh, prior to the preliminary hearing or the filing of the information back in January of 2022 that had also been uh, conveyed to his defense counsel at the time. All right, thank you. So why haven't I been informed of that? All right, Mr. Brooks, um, that is not a topic we are going to take up um, any further. I just wanted the record to reflect uh, that that offer was conveyed to you. It wasn't conveyed um, to me, Your Honor. This is uh, the first time I'm hearing of it. So if it was con conveyed to my former it's counsel. It's not something I'm going to... I, it's not something I'm going to further address, sir, unless you indicate to me that you would like to take advantage of the pretrial offer by uh, changing your pleas to either guilty or no contest to counts 1 through 67 and uh, submit the appropriate paperwork. I'm guessing that's not what you want to do. Uh, so unless that paperwork were to be filed, then I'm going to continue with this trial as if you are exercising your right to a trial in this matter. And in all respect, Your Honor, I don't think it's fair that you should assume what I want to do or not, or what I don't want to do. Um, I just need to make a record that that paperwork was provided, sir. We'll continue with the uh, testimony today. Um, I'm not going to take up subject matter jurisdiction. I've issued a written decision. Is there any other preliminary topic from either party? Yeah. Is, that this, is that decision uh, verified proof that subject matter jurisdiction exists because it has yet to be proven on the record. All right, your objection is noted. Um, please bring the jury out. Your Honor, is that the answer? Mr. Brooks, I issued a written decision. That's and, your answer. And what's that? And what is the written decision in entail? So that was provided to you last week. I'm not going to go through I accept for value and return for value the document that I have not seen. What does it entail, Your Honor? 
Uh, sir, you were provided with a written copy. I'm not going to read it into the record at this point. It is part of the record. It's a final order. If for it's part of the of record, appeal. why can't it be read into the record right now? Um, it doesn't need to be read into the record. Sir. Is it verified proof? Of of, is it verified proof of subject matter? Mr. Brooks, I'm not answering that because it's not something that needs to be verified. Your it, it, did, it, it has belief. to be verified right. by the prosecution. Right? Or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question or verify proof of subject matter jurisdiction? Sir, I have no such agreement with you, uh, tacit or otherwise. So um, that's not how this operates. Again, just so because would it you be believe proven? the law requires, that doesn't make it true. All right, the show jury's me coming out. All law. rise for the jury, please. Show me by lawfully law that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it hasn't been proven on the record. <laughs> It has yet to be proven for the record. Let the record reflect that. Um, the record will not reflect that, and the jury will disregard the comments currently being made. The record just should made reflect by that. Mr. Brooks. You have to put it on the record. Otherwise, that would be tampering with the record. So at 840. All right. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Attack at agreement at 840. Uh, all right. Please disregard the most recent comment Tacit by agreement. Mr. Brooks. It's not evidence in this proceeding. Um, all right. The statement call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state calls Sean Backler. No subject matter jurisdiction. Jerry will disregard that last statement by Mr. Brooks. It has to be on the record. Good morning, sir. Please make your way to the witness stand, which is all the way up by me, to my right. When you get there, uh, please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. There is one riser, so just be mindful of that. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Sean Backler, S-E-A-N, last name, B-A-C-K-L-E-R. All right, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Backler. Hi. Sir, uh, on November 21 of 2021, where did you live? Jackson, Relicancy. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, 409 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay, if you could just keep your voice up a little bit, please. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's maybe better if you scoot a little closer to the microphone. Okay. okay, 409 Central Avenue, and that's in the city of Waukesha? Correct. Okay. Around the uh, time of 4.49 p.m. on that afternoon of November 21, 21, where were you? Uh, Overruled. You may answer, sir. I was outside uh, working around the yard. Uh, had my garage open. Okay. Were you aware that the annual Christmas parade was going on that afternoon? I was aware of it, yes. Did you attend the parade, sir? N no, Judge I didn't. Really busy. Okay. Overruled. Around 4.49 p.m., what happened, sir? Objection. Leading the witness. Um, overruled. I heard some noise around the, on the east side of my garage, and uh, I went to see what was going on. And, I found the defendant uh, on the side of my garage. I asked him what in the f in hell is he doing? <laughs> okay, so let's let's slow down a little bit. Uh, you heard a noise and you went to explore it, correct? Correct. And you saw a person there? Yes, I did. And you questioned that person for being there, is that right? Objection, uh, leading the witness. Um, Foundational, Your Honor. Uh, overruled. Uh, his, I, you can answer. I'm not sure if you did or not. <laughs> I, I, I asked him what, what he was doing there. Okay. And uh, maybe you were cursing at him? Is that what you're suggesting? Objection. I, the witness. Overruled. I think I dropped an F-bomb on him. Why? Objection. He's trespassing. Okay. The person that you... was an objection, but it's overruled. The person that you saw, can you give us a description of that person, please? Um, when I called it in on the non-emergency line at the Waukesha Police Department, I described him 
at, at about about uh, five foot eight, probably weighed about 150 pounds. Uh, he was either black mixed or Latino male, wearing a red shirt, jeans, uh, long hair, beard, and uh, I think he was missing his shoes. Okay. Um, did you you said a red top? Red shirt. Red shirt. What kind of shirt? Um, overruled. Then his answer may stand. He was wearing a red t -no. If there is an objection, please just wait until I rule on it first by saying either uh, overruled or sustained, and I'll let you know if you can answer the question. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, I believe it was a red t-shirt. Okay. Uh, to your way of thinking, was he dressed appropriately for the weather? Objection. Uh, Leading the witness. Overruled. Relevancy. Objection. Overruled. Um, immediately, it... It just seemed off because he was wearing a t-shirt. I, if I remember correctly, he was not wearing shoes. He was, it was very cold out. He was uh, sweating. His eyes were huge and uh, he was just acting. He was, when he came out from the garage, he, he was asking if I could call him an Uber. Okay. So you spoke with him a little bit? Objection leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. Very, no, very I shortly. I have to ask him a question. Rephrase oh, question. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Did you speak with him? A little bit. Okay. What do you remember him saying? Um, he kept asking if I could call him an Uber, and then he said I need to get home. Did you agree to call an Uber for him? No, I said he needed to leave my yard. Okay. And did he comply with that? Yeah, he, he did. He uh, just kept asking, if again, if I could call him over, if he could use my phone. And he said, you just need to leave. And... Uh, the person that you're describing for us, sir, do you see him present in the courtroom here? He's sitting over there with the mask on and in the suit. Okay, I'm going to ask the defendant be instructed to remove the mask. Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask. And if he would look at the witness, please, Your Honor, with his head down, it's not to assist. Right, assistant. Mr. Brooks, please uh, look up and look at the witness. Look at the witness, please. Thank you. Is that the man that you're describing that was in your backyard that you spoke to? Objection. Yes. Leading. Um, overruled. I want to uh, show you a photograph. It's going to come up on that screen there next to you, okay? <coughs> Just let me know when it's up. The system takes a minute to warm up, especially first thing in the morning. Is it up? Yep, it is. Okay. Do you see uh, this photograph, sir? Objection. And overall. Yes. I like you. Is there a person shown in the photograph? It's Jackson. the defendant. Leading. Um, overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. It's the defendant. Is this consistent with his appearance when he presented himself to you on your uh, driveway that evening or uh, backyard garage area? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. It, it is consistent. Okay. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish 171, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Uh, your objection is overruled. Exhibit 171 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The jurors will also let us know when the image is projected in the jury box. And sir, it's a little hard to tell in the photograph, but was the t-shirt he was wearing a short sleeve or long sleeve, if you remember? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. It was a short sleeve shirt. Okay. Ultimately, did he leave your property? Objection, he accident, answer. Overruled. Can I answer? When he was leaving, he was kind of taking his time, and then I told him he needs to leave again, and started walking towards him as he was leaving. And he lifted his shirt up 
and said he was unarmed. Okay. Had you asked him about any weapons? I had no. relevancy. Mm -hmm. I had not asked. When he left your property, did you see which direction he headed? He was going uh, north, uh, northwest. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right, sir. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do, and I object to being called that name for the record. Um, do you recall giving a statement to an officer, Probst? I don't know his name, but I, I've talked to an officer. And you, you did talk to an officer that, that night? I talked to an officer on the phone. I did not talk to an officer that night. I mean, on the phone I did, but not in person. So it was uh, a conversation on the non-emergency uh, line. Would that be fair to say? It was on the non-emergency line. line. I actually uh, confirmed it after I called to make sure I was on the non-emergency line. Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, Who's you? or mixed. Who is you? Well, then you have to let him answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time? I was giving a general description. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure? I was positive that I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. How did, did you I, come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you what conclusion? Because you, can you restate the question? You're saying you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would that be fair to say? I had no idea who you were. And so how can you say who the, how can you say you then if you had no idea? I'm looking at you. You are the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, you and you? I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. So is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Interesting. Do you recall giving a description of approximately five feet nine and 160 pounds? I, it, it, yeah, it's something like that. Something like that, or would that be accurate? I didn't have a tape measure out. It was just a guesstimate. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9", nor 160 pounds? Do you have your shoes on or off right now? Would it be you, fair to it, say that I'm not 5'9", 160 pounds? If you take your shoes off and step out of them, they could have a better... Well, I'm not better going to have them do that, but if you're able to answer the question, uh, do you agree? I'd have to be standing next to him. That's what I made my judgment from. We were about two does feet it, from each other. Does it look like I'm five foot nine? I don't know. We were a lot closer. Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Objection. Grounds. It's irrelevant as to his appearance today, just like his hair isn't in dreadlocks today. <coughs> sustained. Objection. Next question. Grounds for the sustain. Next question, please. You also said that, well, the narrative in the report.
said that the, the individual was later identified. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that'd be fair to say. And so would it also be fair to say that because the uh, the individual was identified later that that's how you came to the conclusion of who it may have been in your yard? Objection, I think that's Grounds. a statement, Your Honor. He's, again, reading a police report. That's that's a question. Not authored by this witness. It's beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. It's actually it's, the report that Mr. he Burks, gave. I've heard enough that the objection is sustained. You may rephrase your question. Did you follow the investigation after you had given the uh, the report on the non-emergency line? It's kind of hard not to see it on TV. Can I can I clarify something? Or? Um, there's not a question just oh, yet, okay. so right. the state will have an opportunity to redirect if they deem it appropriate. Okay. Thank you. So you, you made reference to it was kind of hard not to see it on the news. Would that be fair to say? It was all over the news. And would it be fair to say that from those news reports you gained additional information that you didn't have that night? Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report on, on the Internet. And there you were in a so mugshot. And I'm like, that's the guy. So you got a further description from a mugshot? No, I didn't get a further description. At the time, I didn't care who you were when you were in my yard. I didn't know who you were, what you had done, where you had been, any of so, that stuff. So all I'm, all, all I'm saying is you were trespassing in my yard at that time. And that's all I can say. Other than that, that's all, I'm, that's all I can confirm. I don't know what you did. I don't know where you were. I don't know any of the other stuff. All I know is you were the guy in my yard. The guy that you said was five foot nine, 160 pounds. Objection, argument, Grounds. and asked and answered. Grounds. Sustained. Next question, you don't have to answer that. And what prompted you to read the, or pull up the police report? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds, he, he said it, he brought it out there. Um, overruled, he may answer. I was curious of actually who you were and, and what, if you were the person that actually had done the atrocities that were on tel television. And what prompted the, the curiosity? A stranger was in my yard, unannounced, trespassing, asked me to leave, and they ended up catching somebody for doing something very bad. And I was wondering if that was the individual that had cut through my yard. So it would be fair to say at the time you wasn't privy to that knowledge yet? I had grounds. Uh, sustained us to the form of the question. At the time you pulled up the police report, as you say, you, you had no knowledge of the identity of the individual. I didn't know that you were going to be the person that had done that. You keep referring to the you. You. I'm looking into your eyes right now. You're the, the guy I'm talking about when I refer to you. And the record should reflect that uh, the witness used his right hand and index finger to point directly at uh, the defendant. Next question, please.
So you just made reference to looking the you in the eyes, but you would need. What would you prefer you, I call you? You would need. Because you're not going by Daryl Brooks. You would need me to step out of my shoes to tell my height and weight, right? Well, I'd have to also stand two feet oh, from you. Hold on, hold on, okay. please. Um, the, Mr. Brooks, you're directed under 90611 to ask a question and not argue with the witness. That, that Thank was you. a question. It was argumentative. Now, please rephrase your question. And then the witness is instructed to wait until a question is asked. And if there's any objection, then I rule on it first. Go ahead, next question. It sounds like he didn't want to argue. Jury will disregard that last comment. Mr. Brooks, you're not testifying right now. You'll have an opportunity if you cho choose to do that later. Please ask a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to you. Any reason why you didn't give a, a, a written statement to law enforcement? Objection, argumentative, Rounds. irrelevant. How's it argumentative? Sustained. As to the form of the question, next question, please. Did you at any time give a written statement to law enforcement? I don't believe so. Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds? Argumentative and irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds, Grounds for the sustain? Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. Grounds for the sustain? You said you pulled up the uh, police report at work the next day, right? No, I pulled up your mugshot. Well, you did say police report. Would that be fair to say? It's not answer that. I just pulled up a mugshot. You don't recall saying that you pulled up the police report specifically? I specifically want to pull up the picture of the person in it had committed those atrocities to see if that was the person that had cut through my yard, which confirmed it was. And did you pull up the complaint? No. Have you ever seen the complaint? I don't believe I have. Have you yourself filed a complaint? Nope. Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. As to the form of the question and on relevance. Next question. Do you recall who subpoenaed you to testify here today? Uh, it's on the subpoena. You don't recall? I'd have to have the subpoena with me to read the name. Do you recall if it was the district attorney's office? It or? was. Do you recall about how long you received, how long ago you received the subpoena? You can answer that. A uh, month or two ago, a couple months ago, I didn't. I got a subpoena, so that's all I know, and I had to show up at a certain time. So you knew it was a possibility that you would be called to testify? I had no expectation of the subpoena until I went to the DA's office. So you went to the DA's office? They want to know. They, they ask. <clears throat> they
they want to see if, if, if you're worth having as a witness or if you actually had any information that was pertinent to the case. And so would it be fair to say that you felt that you did? Yeah. I didn't know. Grounds. Well, um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question that struck the last response. Please rephrase. Did you feel that you had uh, information that would be relevant to the matter? That's an irrelevant question, Grounds. Your Honor. Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? <coughs> Ask your next question, please. When you went to the uh, district attorney's office, did you recall whom you spoke with? Um, there was three or four people there. Um, I don't recall. Recall their names, I recall their faces. You said you do recall the names, not the faces? No, I recall their faces, not their names. Oh. Do you see any of those district attorneys in court here today? I see one district attorney and uh, one officer was in the room. And for the record and for the jury, can you identify whom you you're referring to? I'd have to point. Um, the <laughs> I'll her, see you yep. Your Honor. I met with and Mr. The, this and this officer here and sitting behind them. All right, so the yes, witness detective. has pointed to uh, District Attorney Sue Opper and uh, Detective Casey. And that was around the time you first received the subpoena? It was the time that the subpoena told me to show up. Do you recall ever? Uh, you recall ever being told about the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, vague. Sustained as to the formula question. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Vague beyond Grounds. the scope of the witness's knowledge. Legally inaccurate. Sustained as to the formula question. Did Attorney Opper ever tell you who the plaintiff was in this matter? The subpoena told me who the plaintiff was. And do you recall who the plaintiff is? Daryl Brooks. It, that's the plaintiff? Or not the plaintiff, the, the plaintiff is, I think, City of Waukesha or State of Wisconsin, I'm not sure. And it'd be fair to say that that's not a living, breathing human being. Objection. Relevance. Sustained. Not relevant. Next question. Are you aware that only a living, breathing human being can make a claim? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Argumentative. Grounds. Uh, sustained for those reasons, and it's also not an accurate statement. It's definitely not. Definitely not yes. argumentative. Okay. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I need you to move on from this topic and ask a different line of questions, please. Is, 
move on from what topic, Your Honor? Next question, sir. Can I know what topic you're referring to, Your Honor? Next question, please. If I don't know the topic, how would I know to go in a different direction? Mr. Brooks, on 9611, I need you to ask a question. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Nails. Sustained. Under 90611, sir, please move on from this topic or I will declare your cross-examination closed. Under what law and fact, Your Honor? Under 90611, please ask a question. And where can I find 90611? This is your last opportunity to ask a question, sir. Your Honor, the jury deserves to know this information. All right, uh, then, uh, the state, any redirect? No redirect, thank you, Judge. All right, thank you, sir, you may step down. State may call its next witness. You may call. The state calls Dominic Caprone. All right, sir, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right, up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Dominic Caprun, D-O-M-A-N-I-C-C-A-P-R-O-O-N. All right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Caprun, are you a resident of the city of Waukesha? Yes. Where were you living on November 21st of 2021? 417 Jackson Central Revenue. Avenue. Um, the objection is overruled. His answer may stand. When there's an objection, if you would just wait until I rule on it before you answer. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. 417 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay. Were you home on the afternoon of November 21st, that Sunday afternoon? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. His answer may stand. What was the answer? Yes. I believe is what he said. Yes. Can you tell us what happened shortly before 5 o'clock p.m. that day? Well, um, we were at home and uh, my youngest son just got home from a friend's house and uh, we were um, uh, ready to get um, water from uh, Woodman's and uh, we uh, um, were you outside or inside? We were inside. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Did you at some point make your way outside? Um, yeah. Um, we eventually decided to go, and uh, uh, we were bringing the jugs out to the truck, and um, sorry. It's okay. Tell us about the setup. Where was your truck parked? Um, my truck was parked uh, by the back door and the tailgate was facing the entry of the driveway. So you were, the truck was in the driveway? Yes. Okay. And what happened is you were also standing in the driveway? Um, when I was, I was putting the, the jugs in the uh, back of the truck, um, my son, my oldest son, uh, looked up and he kind of pointed behind me and I went turn and uh, uh, Mr. Brooks uh, 
was uh, coming up the driveway. And uh, when I turned, um, he uh, kind of stopped and I noticed that he wasn't wearing a jacket or shoes. Um, just Could you tell us what he was wearing? He was wearing uh, Um, overall, he may answer. Okay. Um, he was uh, wearing just the blue jeans and like a red t-shirt. And uh, he had lifted his shirt and did a 360 and told me that he didn't have any weapons and uh, that he needed a phone to call an Uber. And so um, I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So, you know, I handed him my phone and uh, I had suggested to him that my neighbor was uh, a Lyft driver. And uh, so we continued to, you know, with the containers. And uh, so I put the last one in and he handed me my phone and um, he uh, turned the corner and uh, just wanted to see if he, you know, got a hold of my neighbor, looked around the corner and, and then he was, he was gone. So. When Mr. Brooks lifted his shirt and did a 360 and said he was unarmed, were those the first words he said to you while you were in your driveway? Objection leading and I do not consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I think it was more or less all together. Okay. And how many of your sons were present? And in the driveway with you. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Um, two. How old were they at the time? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Um, one was uh, 21, and the other one was uh, 14. Do you recall providing a physical description of this of Mr. Brooks, the person you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today? Um, back on November 21st when you met with the police? Objection. I did not consent to being called that name. Mr. Brooks, that's not a valid objection at this time. Um, go ahead, you may I answer. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, go ahead and answer. Yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> back on November 21st when you met with the police, did you provide a physical description of the man who came up your driveway? Yes. Objection, rather than see. Overruled. What was the physical description you provided? Um, it was a black male, um, mid-30s at the time, um, dreadlocks, uh, tied up in a band. He had uh, tattoos. One I noticed uh, above his right eye. Um, and some he had on his arms, but it was kind of dark yet, so it didn't get... So the darkness out. prevented you from being able to see any detail of the yeah. arm tattoos? Yes. Yeah. Objection yeah. leading. Overruled. Your Honor, could you please instruct Mr. Brooks to remove his mask momentarily? Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask and look at the witness. Mr. Caprone, the person you've described today is walking up your driveway, the person who you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today. Do you see that person in the courtroom today? Objection. Yes. Leading. Overruled. You may <coughs> answer, I sir. I to be in court that name either. Yes. Could you please point to him and then tell us what he's wearing? He's wearing a suit and tie. What the mask. Your Honor, let the record reflect, please, that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. And then he pointed with his right hand towards Mr. Brooks. Oh, thank you for that. Objection, I don't consent to be in court that name. For the record. Whose phone, you described handing a phone to Mr. Brooks, whose phone was it? Objection, I don't consent to be in court that name. Your objection is noted, although it's not legally relevant at this time and I'd ask that you not interrupt 
with an objection for that reason under 906.11. Um, go ahead, Attorney Witch, I'll your question again. That name. Whose phone was it that you handed to the man in your driveway? That was my phone. <clears throat> and did you see what that man did with the phone? Uh, Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He, uh, he called a number on the phone, or called somebody, which mm -hmm. I at the time thought was Uber. Did that man then hand the phone back to you at some point? Yes. When you met with the police, did they ask to see your phone? Yes. And the purpose of that was to try and see the number that yes. Mr. Brooks had called? Objection. Yeah. Overruled. No consent to being called that name. Yes. Will we please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 74, a photograph. Go ahead. Objection, Brother VC. Overruled. <coughs> Ground. It's relevant. Mr. Caproon, do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. What are we looking at here? Um, this is the number that uh, Mr. Brooks had called. Can you read that number out loud for us? Objection, uh, relevancy. Overruled. Um, 414-610-2153. And this is a call history screenshot, is that right? Where we can see uh, all the recent calls to and from that number? Yes. Is this an accurate depiction of how your phone screen looked uh, that afternoon as you showed it to the police? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. I move exhibit 74 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Objection. Brother VC. Exhibit 74 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objections overruled. Okay, Mr. Caprun, did you call this number at any point? Objection. Leading. Um, Overruled. He may answer. No. So all three of these calls, outgoing, incoming, and canceled, would have been made by someone other than you. Yes. Objection. Leading. And the only person who had your phone during that time frame was who? Objection. Me. Um, Overruled. Or Derek. No, Mr. Brooks. After Mr. Brooks handed you your phone back, what happened next? Um, a lady had called me um, and I answered the phone and uh, I asked her if she was an Uber and she told me she wasn't an Uber. Did she say anything else? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, no. No. Is the call that you're talking about, the lady who called you, was that that incoming call from that 414 number we just looked at? Objection, leading. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. Did you recognize the number that called you? Um, I didn't recognize it. I didn't look at the number. I just answered the phone. And it was recorded in your phone's call history? Yes. And it was the same number that Mr. Brooks had used your phone to dial. Objection, yes. leading, and I don't consent to being caught that name. Overruled. I'm sorry, I took the exhibit down. Did you need it back up? No, oh, um, we're done. All right, thank you. And that was a yes, just to be clear. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Did Mr. Brooks leave at some point? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Yes. Did you see what direction he went when he left? Um. I guess it would be like uh, the southwest part of my property, um, heading more westerly towards my neighbors. Okay. Do you know what street he was headed, or he appeared to be headed toward? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Um, well, Central Avenue is an L Street, and he was heading towards Central. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That's all. All right. Very well. Uh, any questions, Mr. Brooks, for this yes. witness? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Um, do you recall um, giving a statement to a Detective Schwartz? <coughs> I'm not sure what his name was. I'm referring to a Detective Mandy L. Schwartz, so that would be a woman. There was a female, yes. And do you recall giving a statement to the woman law enforcement officer? Yes. Do you recall uh, if that was the same night or days immediately after? Or? It was the same night. And do you recall in that statement, if you were asked about the a description of the person in your driveway, yes. Do you recall what you uh, what, what you said? Yes. May you state it for the record and for the jury. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, black male, thirties, um, dreadlocks. Um, Red shirt, jeans, no shoes, no jacket. If it pleases the court, I have uh, the statement here, and I would like to show the witness. Is it his written statement? It's the, I'm guessing, whatever statement he gave to Detective Shorts. Is it a written statement? I don't know if it's a written statement. Would maybe it the, may. Maybe would it this may. be the police report? Yeah. If it's not his written statement, then I'm going to deny that request to show it to the witness. You may ask a question. Do you recall in your um, report with Detective Shorts? that you described the male as approximately 5'5 five, five to 5'6, five, weighing approximately 120 to 125 pounds, and the male appeared to be in his 20s? Um, I yeah, I don't recall. Any reason why, um, this report would say that and then you would when you were asked the description you gave a different description any reason why the two would conflict objection grounds argumentative grounds and mistakes the evidence sustained reason for the sustain grounds for the sustain sustained us of the form of the question and it mistakes the testimony in part well i'm reading from the report that was given to the detective. And you can't testify as to what that report says. You can only question the witness on it, sir. That was a question. Do Do you recall? He said he did not recall. Next question. Any reason why your um, description would change from that night till now? Um, um, I'm not sure. Um, you made reference to um, when the mail that was in your driveway left your driveway, they went towards Central, I think is what you said. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Do you recall stating in um, your report that they went in the direction of West Avenue? 
Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's two different directions? Um, yes. Any reason why that would change from then till now? Um, not sure. And you made reference to it being kind of dark, so it was um, a little hard to tell about uh, certain aspects of that interaction. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would you say it was dark or dusk? Dusk. So it would be fair to say that you were unable to identify tattoos? Um, I would, I would be able to, yes. You would be able to identify tattoos or you wouldn't? Not, um, I knew I saw tattoos but you couldn't make out because of the lighting? You couldn't make them out? Would that be fair to say? I could make out tattoos. Do you recall stating that you were not able to identify the tattoos? Um, in, I guess, in description, I guess, her, uh, in detail, sorry. And not being able to make out in detail would be the, uh, referring to the tattoos on the arms. Yes. And during that interaction in the lighting, you could tell that there was a, 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 some type of rubber band or tie in the hair. <coughs> yes. Do you recall what color that might have been? No, I don't. You made reference to a, um, a number calling you back and you not <coughs> looking at the number but just answering. Do you recall stating that? Yes. Did you ever at any time ask who that was that called? Uh, I just asked if uh, it was an Uber driver.
you stated that um, your sons were with you in the driveway? Yes. Was there any interaction with your sons at that time? Mm. Don't recall. Do you recall stating that the male did not have any interactions with either of your sons? No. Do you recall stating that the male you had the, the interaction with, do you recall stating that you did not really think he was understanding what you were telling him? I don't understand the question. That would be in reference to um, you stating that your neighbor was an Uber driver, did you? Or a Lyft driver, you, was I think the word you said. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated that you don't recall if the individual went to your neighbor's house at that time. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall about what time of the evening that was when you had the interaction? Um, um, I wasn't, I'm not quite sure what time it was at that time. Do you recall uh, around what time you were subpoenaed to testify here <laughs> today? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I think a letter came in the mail in July. And did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Um, yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? Um, uh, not quite sure the names, but. <laughs> you made a, uh, let the record reflect, you made a hand gesture with your left hand. Would that be referring to the table? Yes. The prosecution table? Yes. So you recall speaking to one of those attorneys? Yes. Do you recall whom? Um, the gentleman here. I'll stipulate that uh, Mr. Caprin's pointing at me. Yeah. All right, the record will still reflect.
And at any time, did you uh, ever see a police reporter complain in this matter? Um, no. Did you ever yourself make a claim in this matter? I don't understand the question. Did you file a claim? Um, I don't understand the question. Did you yourself file a complaint with law enforcement? <coughs> no. Ever spoke with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. 90611. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Relevance 90611 as well. You ever seen a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Next question. Had any conversations or any interactions with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Ever had a phone conversation with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Sustained as to the form of the question. Ever been contacted by the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. Have you ever contacted the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. As to the form of the question. Have you uh, followed uh, this matter in any way? Um, no. So it'd be fair to say you didn't seek to testify in this matter. That'd be fair to say? Yes. Were you persuaded in any way to testify in this matter? No. Did you prepare in any way to testify in this matter? No. And before you, you were shown Exhibit 74, um, and that was the, the call log of your phone, correct? Before, oh, I'm sorry. With, yes. Before yeah. today, had you seen that, uh, those photos in reference to your call log? Yes. You seen them before today? Yes.
Did you anticipate seeing them today? Mm, yes. How so? Um, through um, the uh, um, sorry, okay. through uh, the uh, district attorney. So you were informed that you would see those same photos by the district attorney? Yes. Were you at any time were you at any time told what to say by the district attorneys? No. Are you even aware of a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Grounds, Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? I previously sustained it. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question. Under 90611, please continue. Otherwise, I'll declare the cross-examination yeah, ended. You can, you, just, you can declare whatever you want to. No, no further questions. <laughs> thank you. Can you redirect? <coughs> Very briefly, thank you, Judge. Mr. Capruin, I just want to clarify the geography of your neighborhood, okay? So back where you were living on uh, November 21st of last year on Central Avenue, does Central run east to west, north to south, or something else? Objection leading. Hold on, hold You may answer, sir. Central runs east and west and north and south. Where does it, what direction does it run where you were living at the time? Objection leading. East and, east and west. Hold on, over -rolled. It's not leading. You may answer. Objection relevancy. It's relevant. You may answer, sir. East and west. And then where does it change and run north and south? Um, Objection relevancy. Overruled. It changes um, my neighbor's house and then it turns north and, and south. That happens to the west of where your yes. house was? Yes, objection leading. Yeah. Well, overruled, his answer may stand. I'll say yes. Yes. Where is West Avenue in relation to where your house was? Objection relevancy. Overruled. Um, west. <laughs> so is it fair to say that if you're standing in your driveway at the time and head west, you would hit where Central Avenue turns and then if you kept going, you'd hit West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. So is it also fair to say that if you're heading towards Central Avenue, you're also heading toward West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. You recall meeting with myself and my colleagues here a few weeks ago? Objection yes. relevancy. Overruled. Do you remember where that meeting took place? Um, here. In the courthouse? In the, yeah. During business hours? Objection, rather easy. Overruled, you question him about meeting with the prosecution. They can use their proper. I didn't question him about the time. It's proper redirect. Go ahead, sir, you may answer. Yes. We uh, yes. discussed your potential testimony, is that right? Yes. Were we asking you questions about November 21st? Objection, speculative. Overruled, you may answer. <coughs> yes. We showed you uh, that the photograph of the call log, right? Yes. And you, you had an independent recollection. You had seen that call log before because it's from your own phone. Objection, leading. Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Had you ever seen that photograph before? Yes. And had you ever looked at your phone screen before? Objection, for leading. Not leading. It's relevant, and he may answer. Um. Yes. 
Did we at any time give you a script for your testimony today? Objection. Asked during cross. Um, it's redirect. It's proper. You may answer. It's overruled. No. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all we have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. Thank you. The state calls Aaron Cordes. Good morning. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing and raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shows the, truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Erin Cordes, first name E-R-I-N, last name Cordes, C-O-R-D-E-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Cordes. Good morning. Uh, Ma'am, I'd like to direct your attention to the date of November 21, 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon? Yes, I did. And who did you attend the parade with? Uh, my husband and my two children. Do you recall uh, from what location you watched the parade? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, she may answer. Uh, we watched it from the corner of West and Wisconsin. Okay, and uh, do you understand that to be near the end of the parade route? Objection, leading. Um, overruled, she may answer. Uh, I believe it was close to the end. Um, the parade rounded the corner and continued on and I don't know exactly where it ended. Okay, and uh, as you were uh, at that location watching the parade, did something unusual happen? Objection, leading. Overruled. Um, yes, we, we saw a car going pretty fast around the corner, um, and I remember my husband said, that's not, a, not, that's not part of the parade, grab the kids, because our kids were in the middle of the road picking up candy at the time. Okay. So, um, and the car just did not stop and kept going. Was there a police officer present at that corner? Uh, yes, there was. What did you see the police officer do? Um, well, the, the car, I thought it was coming at us for a minute, but it ended up swerving and going through the barricades and the police officer um, fired three shots at the vehicle. You were standing right there at that intersection? Yes, I was. Objections what noted, it's overruled. Uh, her answer may stand. Next question. Go ahead. What did you do after that, ma'am? Uh, well, we ran up to the house behind us as the car was coming at us. And um, I was just kind of keeping an eye out for the car at the time because I, it looked like it was out of control and I didn't know if it was going to go up to the house we were at or what direction it was going. So we just stayed by the house for a little bit, just kind of in shock okay. after that happened. Okay. And at some point, did you decide to leave the area? Yes, we did. Where did you go? Uh, we went. We were parked a little bit further away because we had gotten to the parade late. So we were parked um, a few blocks out of the way uh, on Elizabeth Street okay. in, at Aries Industries. Now, do you have some familiarity with Aries Industries? Uh, yes, I do. Overruled, she may answer. Do me a favor, if there is an objection, wait until I rule on it before you answer. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, what's your familiarity with Aries Industries? Objection. Overruled. My husband is employed at Aries Industries. Do you happen to know the address of that location? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. I don't offhand, no. Okay. Do you know what street it's on? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Leading. It's not leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, Elizabeth Street. Okay. And uh, is it a... How were you able to, um, well, strike that. You were walking back to Aries Industries, that's where you had parked. 
right? Correct. What was your route or your path that you took? We continued straight on on West Avenue until we got to Elizabeth Street and then took a right on Elizabeth Street. Okay. Pretty much a straight shot? Yes. Just a couple blocks? Yes. Down West Avenue and then you hang a right on Elizabeth? Correct. Okay. As you were doing that, making your way back to your car, uh, did you encounter somebody out on foot? Yes, we did. Tell us about that, please. Objection, Lee. Overruled, she may answer. We had just rounded the corner onto Elizabeth Street and um, Daryl Brooks, we ran into, we encountered Daryl Brooks. He came out of the shadows be between a couple houses and okay. approached us. Okay. Now you refer to this person by name. Did you know Mr. Brooks prior to this encounter? No. Okay. Never met him before? Correct. Objection. And you yeah. said he, oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Um, the objection came after her answer. Uh, her answer will stand. Uh, next question. You said he kind of came out of, the, did you say the bushes? Objection. What did you say? <coughs> Objection. Oh, overruled. She rephrased. He may answer. She may answer. I'm sorry. It appeared he came be be from between two houses. So I, I don't know exactly where he was. Okay. And did you notice his appearance when he approached you? Objection. Leave. Overruled. Yes, I did. What did you notice? Um, it was, I just remember it was a very windy, cold night, and he was dressed pretty inappropriately for the night. He had a, I noticed he was visibly shivering. He had a red short sleeve t-shirt on and was not wearing shoes. Do you see the same person present in this courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that Mr. Brooks be instructed to remove his mask and look at the witness so she can properly identify him, please. Mr. Brooks, please uh, unmask and look at the witness. Sir, would you please unmask and look I at the am. witness? Thank I was you. Write some down. All right, thank you. Just want to make sure you heard me. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Is that the gentleman you encountered on the street that you're describing for us, ma'am? Yes, it is. Did Mr. Brooks speak to you in any way? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. Um, you may answer. Uh, yes, he did. What did he say? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Um, he asked if um, either of us had a phone that he could use. Yeah. And, and we said, we, we hesitated because it was, it was strange. It was a strange encounter. And um, after what we had just witnessed at the parade, we, I think we were both pretty much on edge at that point. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. When you're referring to we, who are you referring to? Sorry, my husband and I. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So um, he asked for the phone. Correct. You kind of pause. Yep. And then what'd you do? And then overrule. Go ahead. You may answer. His next words were, I'm not going to hurt you. I just need to use your phone. And okay. that's when I gave him my phone. Okay. Did, um, did he use your phone? Did you see him manipulate your phone in some fashion? Objection. What do you mean by manipulate? Um, overruled. She may answer. I'm sorry. What was the question? Again? Did you see him use your phone in some way? Yes, I did. What did you see him do? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Um, he called his mom. Could you hear what he was saying on his end? Yes, I could hear what he was saying. Could you hear the uh, responses being provided by the person on the other end of the phone? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. No, I could not hear the other side of the conversation. Okay. Tell us to the best of your memory what you remember Mr. Brooks was saying into the phone. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. I'll Go ahead and answer, ask please. not to be called that name. Thank you. He just kept asking his mom to call him an Uber. And I. he wasn't responding to anything that she was asking. He just kept repeating, call me an Uber. I need an Uber now. Did he sound urgent in his voice? Objection, leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How did his voice sound? There was a sense of urgency that he needed an Uber and he needed it now. And he was um, specifically referring to the person he was speaking to by what name? Mom. Objection, leading. Overruled. Um, she did answer. Her answer will stand. At some point, uh, 
did Mr. Brooks turn his attention to you and ask a question to you as he was still on the phone? Objection, I don't consent to being caught in that. Um, go ahead and answer. He asked for the address where, he, where we were located at the time. What did you tell him? I did not know the address, so I asked my husband what the address was and he provided the answer. Okay, and again, you're very close to your husband's workplace. Uh, we were actually in the parking lot at that time. Okay. I'm going to uh, – well, let me ask you this. At, at some point, did he terminate his phone call? Objection, leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, he did. And what happened then? Um, he said that he was freezing and he asked if I knew of any place that he could go warm up. So my husband directed him towards the lobby of Aries. Okay. Um, did he return your phone? His, I'm sorry. Did he return your phone to you? Yes, he did. Okay. And uh, did you see if he left your presence, where did he go? Objection. Lee. Overruled. He went up to the lobby. You saw that? Yes. Okay. Where did you go? We, we were pretty on edge at that point, so we put our kids in the car as quickly as possible and drove down the road. Okay. I'm going to show you um, some uh, exhibits on the screen in front of you, okay? Um, first is 171. I'm sorry. Do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you, ma'am? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you recognize anybody or any place in that photograph? Objection leading. Overruled. I recognize the Aries building in the background and Daryl Brooks on the porch. Okay. Uh, 171's previously been admitted, Your Honor. I'm going to uh, request permission to publish again. Permission granted. Objection. All right. It's noted it's overruled. It's already been received. Ms. Cordes, that's a touch screen in front of you. Could you just please uh, point out uh, Aries Industries <laughs> and specifically, if you can, the area where you saw Mr. Uh, Brooks Objection. head to the lobby of the building? Objection. I don't consent to being caught in that again. Um, Jerry will disregard that last comment by the defendant. So, do you, do you want me to circle? Yeah, circle or X or. Dot, it's whatever. It's way in the other corner over here, so it's okay. hidden by the trees. Okay. So the area where you first encountered Mr. Brooks, is that actually shown in this photograph? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Jerry will disregard that comment. I don't consent. For the uh, record. Go ahead and answer, ma'am. It's more over here where we were parked. There's a second parking lot okay. over there. Okay. And then uh, the person in the photograph. Can you circle the person, please? Is that what Mr. Brooks looks like? Looked like that evening when you spoke to him? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Go ahead and answer. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to put up exhibit one. I'm sorry, exhibit 76. And we're going to play it for you first uh, before it gets shown to the jury, okay? So at. Uh, let me know when it's up, please. It's um, on her screen. Okay, thank you. For the record, this is a clip that's 53 seconds long. I'm just going to play maybe the first uh, 10 seconds or so and see if she recognizes. All right, we've uh, played about the first 10 seconds of that clip. Do you? Recognize the uh, what is shown in this video, ma'am? Yes, I do. What do you recognize it to be? It's the lobby of Aries Industries. Okay. And uh, is this the door that you directed Mr. Brooks to? Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name. You may answer, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Do you believe this uh, video is a true and accurate depiction of the events of November 21 of 21? Objection. Yes, I do. Uh, move to your admit 76 and permission to publish, Your Honor. I believe there was an objection. It's noted. It's overruled. Uh, exhibit 76 is received and permission to publish is granted. The witness wasn't there at the, in this video. How could it be relevant? 
Uh, your objections noted, sir. Yeah, We're going to play it in its entirety, Your Honor. As soon as the jury's got it. They got it. Okay, thank you. Play. Okay, we can pause it at the 30, 39 second or 40 second mark. I said we'll play the whole thing, but uh, did you see a person approach the doors to the building during the video? Yes, I did. I saw Daryl Brooks approach the door. And is that consistent with what you saw that night uh, as you watched Mr. Brooks? Yes. Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. And now that you look at uh, the door, do you see the address for the building on the door? Yes, I do. And what is the address, please? Uh, 550. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions. All right. Uh, Mr. Brooks may have questions for you. Any cross, sir? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. <coughs> Your cross, please. Can I get to it? You just stated that before the interaction with the person that you had, you didn't know him. That be fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. So how could you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? I have seen the news since then and your the video of you being arrested and you had since been identified on TV. So that's how you came to the, the name? That's correct. So it would be fair to say that you got that off of news reports? That's correct. You said the individual you spoke with seemed out of place and disoriented like he didn't know where he was. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. And we, and how would you characterize disoriented? You just seemed very, very nervous and that you didn't know where you were. Who's you? You had specifically said, I don't know where I am. Who's you? Or where am I specifically? So disoriented would, would, from your perspective, be exactly what? Disoriented as you did not know where you were. And you made reference to uh, your phone being used, right? That's correct. And you also made reference to not being able to hear the, uh, the person on the other line. That's correct. But you also made reference to not the person who used your phone not being able or not answer, answering what was being asked to them. That be fair to say? Objection. That's a compound Grounds. question, vague and unclear. Sustained us to the form of the question. If you couldn't hear 
what was being said on the other end of the line. How can you how can you say that there was questions being asked? Well, there was clearly a conversation going on, and you just kept repeating, just call me an Uber, that you were very frustrated, <coughs> and whoever was asking questions of you didn't just to call you an Uber. It's just my interpretation of it. I could not hear the other end of the phone conversation. So it'd be fair to say you don't know what was being discussed? Besides call me an Uber, yes, that's correct. Do you recall the description you gave in your written statement? Uh, yes, I believe so. You believe so? Yes, I recall the description I gave. And what was that? The description I gave was an African American male, about 160 pounds, 5'8", wearing a red t-shirt, no shoes. And you referred to this individual coming from between houses, you said? That's correct. Is that what you actually saw? Yes, that's what I saw. I saw you approach us at the very start of the block from between two houses. Any reason why that's not in your written statement? I don't recall. I didn't actually write it. There was an, a detective at our house that was writing the statement for it. M maybe that part got missed. I'm not sure. Was it this statement? I don't have it in front of me to see it. Uh, permission to show the witness the written statement? Well, I don't know that it's necessary, Your Honor. It ha she hasn't expressed any inability to recall. Sustained. Uh, she did. She just said she don't know why that something was not in her written statement. That's <coughs> what she said is she doesn't know why the detective didn't write it in there. The detective is the one who wrote it, Your Honor. So sustained. So where you, That's sustained so is where in the you, form of... Mr. Brooks, let me answer. Sustained is to the form of the question. So the officer was writing what you told him or did you actually write it yourself? I did not actually write it myself. The detective was writing it as we were speaking, my husband and I. Do you recall that officer's name? No, I do not. <clears throat> you made reference, when you were at the parade, you made reference to seeing a car swerve, or you said the car was swerving toward you? It looked like a car that was out of control. I didn't know which direction it was headed. <coughs> and you said you saw it, it drove toward the barricade? Correct, I saw it drive through the barricade. When you say through the barricade, uh, describe that. 
The car sped up and drove straight through the barricade and continued on West Avenue. Do you recall if this barricade was standing up or I do down? not I do not recall that. I was <coughs> in the middle of the road to prevent traffic from coming through, so I don't know if it was I would assume it was standing up. And it, was it at that same moment that um you saw officer fire shots? That's correct. Do you recall how many shots? Three shots. Did you see if the shots hit the vehicle, the cars, no. you say? No, I did not. I was running up towards the house at the time with my son in my arms, and I was just trying to keep an eye on the vehicle, so I did not see where the shots actually went. Did you see a vehicle hit anyone? No, I did not. Could you see into the vehicle when you saw it? No, I could not. And you said the vehicle went down West Street? West Avenue, correct. Did you see where it went from there? Or did it just go straight down West Avenue? Uh, it, it continued on West Avenue. I, I was at one point, um, the house was blocking the road, so I, could, I couldn't see where the vehicle continued on. Anything else stick out to you about that day? I I, I don't I don't know. Just, I mean, besides besides seeing the vehicle and and the police firing shots and then running into you afterwards, I mean, that was strange enough. Do you recall uh, what day you gave the? Um, Statement. Was Not it the exactly. same night, or was it a few days after, or a week, or? It might have been up to a week later. I don't know the exact date. Recall why it took so long? I I don't know. I received a phone call from a detective probably <sighs> almost a week later, and I would assume that they had a lot of other other people to attend to, other witnesses to get to. It was not a priority at the time. I was not. So it would be fair to say by that time you had saw news reports and had learned information about what happened. Correct. Before today, had you seen any of the uh, video footage or, or uh, 
photos that that you saw today? Had had you seen any of those before today? Are you talking about the video of you being arrested, or I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, the videos that, the video footage that you saw today, had you seen that before today? I did see the Aries Industries clip before, yes. What about the other, uh, the other exhibit that was shown? I recognized that from a ring video I had, I had seen from the arrest. So it would be fair to say a lot of what you learned came from news reports. After the incident, yes. Did you make any claim in this matter? Filed a claim? What kind of a claim? Have you filed any claim? No. You filed a complaint? I not no, I I just um gave a witness statement to the detectives. I did not file a complaint specifically. About what time did you learn that you could possibly testify in this matter? Objection relevance. Overruled, you may answer. Um, when I received a subpoena in the mail from the DA's office. Do you recall whose name was on that subpoena? Uh, Sue Opper. Do you see Sue Opper in court today? Yes, I do. Can you point her out for the jury and for the record? I'll stipulate, Your Honor. Thank you. Record will reflect the stipulation and the witness identifying attorney Opper. Do you call? Do you recall around uh, what time you received that uh, <coughs> subpoena? I don't recall exactly. No. After you received the subpoena did, subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Uh, they contacted me. Attorney Opper did? Some, someone, it was a, someone from the witness, I don't know what her exact title is, so it's someone from the DA's office. It's not specifically Sue Opper. Like a witness advocate type of? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Was it like a witness advocate? I don't know what her exact title is. Do you recall her, the, her name? Yeah, her, her, yes, her name is Carrie. <clears throat> After you learned of the additional information, did you uh, read any police reports or a complaint? No.
Are you aware of who the plaintiff may be in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Yes. Sustained. Ever been notified who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor. Next question, please. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Yes, there is. And who's the plaintiff? I believe it's the state of Wisconsin. Would that constitute a, a, a breathing human being or an entity? Objection, Grounds. argumentative, irrelevant, Grounds. sustained. Are you aware that only a human being can bring a complaint or be a plaintiff? Objection, misstatement Grounds. of the law, sustained. You ever had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Grounds for Surrender 90611, please. Move on. Have you ever contacted the state of Wisconsin in this matter? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained. Under 90611, move on or I'll declare the cross-examination ended. Of course you would. No further questions. Any redirect? Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. This will also be a very good opportunity to take a mid-morning break. I'll rise for the jury, please. For the parties, uh, please be back in 10 minutes. We are in recess.
All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State, have the next witness available? Um, yes. Yep, no, I know. I need oh, the yeah. jury. Yes, we're ready. Go back on the record. We'll have the jury brought out. Okay. I know I did that once, but I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> not yet. Now it is. You got to. I got to get faster on that. Yep. Sometimes I just forget. Are you going to address subject matter jurisdiction? No. Still has yet to be proven for the record. <coughs> Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer there, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I've already answered subject matter jurisdiction. You know that full well. No, the I don't. The decision was entered last week. I know nothing. It has yet to be proved. That's what I know. It doesn't need to be proved. It, it does. It has to be proven by the prosecution. You know that. No, it, I, I actually know to the contrary, so we're not going to address so, it. So show me a uh, lawful law that is that it says Mr. that. Mr. Brooks, I provided you with the law. No, I'll you give have you not. An, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll have my clerk print off another copy of that order. So you don't have, have to it. do that. Have, have no, her I'm going print. to because you apparently didn't read no, it. No, so have her print off proof. Have her print off proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction. How about that? It has to be proven Mr. for the Brooks, record. It has you yet are to be proven. simply wrong as a matter of no, law. No, I'm not. If I'm wrong, then then show me show me that I'm wrong. I've given you the constitutional and no, the statutory haven't. authority. No, and you have not. Law. You have not proven it on the record. 
It doesn't need to be proven, sir. It does need to be proven. I believe the jury's coming in. Right. I believe it. Got to prove it. You got to prove subject matter jurisdiction. Uh, set for value and return for value of that document is not proof of subject matter jurisdiction for the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The state may call its next witness. The state will call Anthony Witchers. All right. Good morning, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is upper riser. <coughs> when you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you sell these words of the testimony you're about to give? Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Anthony Winters, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, W-I-N-T-E-R-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Sir, direct your attention to November 21st, 2021. Were you working in the city of Waukesha that day? Yes. What were you doing? I was driving Lyft. Can you explain for those few people, I think, who don't know what Lyft is, mm -hmm. can you explain what that is? It's a ride share app where people can request rides from point A to point B. Now, some people use Uber. Is that similar? Sim yes, same thing. <laughs> and is that your full-time job? No. Okay. Did you go to the parade, the city of Waukesha parade that day? I did not. Did, were you aware that the parade wasn't downtown Waukesha that day? Objection, mm -hmm. lady. Um, overall, he may answer. Yes, I was. How were you aware of that? Uh, it was, everything was blocked off and there was heavy police presence and then I saw kind of the convoy going. Okay. So you say everything was blocked off, what do you mean by that? Like a lot of the streets, when I was having to go pick up people, a lot of the streets were blocked off so I couldn't go certain ways. Do you recall approximately what time you started uh, driving that day? Um, it was around like 3.25. Mr. Winters, do me a favor. If there is an objection that's been raised by either party, mm -hmm. wait to answer the question. I'll rule on the objection and then I'll let you know. Yes, ma'am. So the objection's noted, it's overruled, and you may continue answering. Yes, ma'am. Um, 325. Thank you. And do you know approximately how many fares you took um, that day? That objection day. Speculative. Overruled, he may answer. That day, it was probably anywhere from like about 11 or 12, somewhere in there. Do you, were, you, were your um, clients all from the city of Waukesha? Was that the general area that you were working? Objection, mm -hmm. irrelevant. Overruled, you may answer. No, um, I just happened to be in that area at that time. At some point after, you, do you know approximately what time you got done working that night? Oh. It was probably later, around like 10, 11 o'clock that night. When you got home, did you see anything on the news? No. Um, at some point, did you become aware of an incident that had occurred during the city of Waukesha Christmas parade? Yes. Lee. Overruled, he may answer. His answer may stand. Generally, what information were you, did you obtain? Objection, um, Lee. Overruled. Um, when I saw every, like a bunch of police cars going, you know, I, contacted my sister because my niece goes to school at Carroll and I was wondering what was going on. She told me something that wasn't even true that was going on, but later after, uh, like the next day after watching the news and, you know, social media, I found out what happened. Looking back when you were working November 21st, 2021, did anything seem relevant with regard to that news that you saw? Objection, lady. Overruled. You may answer. Yeah, I had a call that was in the area, and it was like, it was like just like a really weird call because no one ever showed up, but there was a very descriptive um, message that I got from the person that asked for the call about who I was looking for. 
Okay, so I'm going to direct your attention to that that day, November 21st, at approximately 5.15 p.m. Um, what time did that, or how do you receive communication when you get a client? Um, when you're signed into the app, it'll just pop up. You know, it'll, you can accept it or you can decline. So you say it just pops up. How does it pop up on, on my, my cell phone? Okay. And um, did you receive uh, a fare request or a ride request at approximately 515? Objection, lady. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I did. What information were you given with regard to that request? Objection, um, lady. Overruled, he may answer. So the fare came in for a uh, dawn. Um, and the address I was picking up at was, I think, was 550 Elizabeth. And it was an empty, well, it wasn't an empty, it was, a, it was an empty parking lot, but it was a company that was closed. Um, and then I was given information that I was looking for a light skinned black guy with dreadlocks. Okay. Now, when you say that your, the name is, was it a name associated with Dawn? Mm hmm. That's a yes? Yes. Okay. And what does that mean to you? I'm not sure exactly how Lyft works, but... That's just... Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. That's just the name of the person that I'm picking up. That I'm, I'm assuming that's the person I'm picking up. Okay. And were you in the city of Waukesha when that um, pop-up came on your phone? Yes. Okay. So what did you do? Um, I drove to the parking lot and waited for the... And, hit that I arrived and waited for whomever was going to come out of the company. And that would be, you said 550 Elizabeth Street? Yes, ma'am. And that's in the city of Waukesha? Yes, ma'am. Did you, or do you receive information as to where you're taking the person when you initially get the pop-up? Objection, leave. Overruled, you may answer. When you initially get the request, you don't know where the person is going? until you say that you arrived, then you can see the address that they're going to. Okay. So, did you eventually arrive at that location? Yes. <clears throat> what did you observe? Um, it was just a dark parking lot and um, a couple of police cars on the street. Um, no one was really around those. It seemed like it was like a closed building. I didn't know, you know, it was just empty parking lot, no one there. <laughs> okay. And did you see anyone, both strike that. When you arrived at the location, do you send something through your app that says I've arrived? Objection, read. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, you just, yeah, there's a button that you can just click and say I arrived, and it sends a message to the person letting you know that you're out, let them know that you're outside and they have five minutes to come out. Now is that when you would get the destination on your app? Yes. And do you recall? <clears throat> <clears throat> what that destination was? Um, I don't recall the physical address. I just know it was on 19th Street in Milwaukee. So you said that you, the automated message went out saying that you were there and that you give that person five minutes? Yes. What happened after five minutes? I began to message with uh, whomever the person was on the other end, letting them know that I was waiting outside and that there you know I was in a white car and this is a chat feature as part of the app yes leading overruled your answer may stand and then what happened um, I received a message back let me know who I was looking for and that they were calling a ride for someone else and they didn't know where he was they then again gave me a description of who I was looking for. And what was that description? Objection leading. Overruled. I, I answer. Um, overruled, he may answer. A light skinned black guy with dreadlocks. After you were given that information, what did you do? I sent a message saying I didn't see anyone. Um, I received a message back saying, I don't know where he is. His phone died. He called me from someone else's phone. What did you do then? Um, at that point, I didn't know. I, it was a basketball court out there, so I thought I was waiting on a kid. Okay. So I didn't want to just leave. Um, so I got out my car. I knocked on the door at the company to see if anybody would come out. I rang the buzzer. 
He got no answer. Um, I got back in my car. I sent a message and saying, sent the message saying there's no one around. Um, you know, could they, you know, make sure the person comes out? Cause I had already been past the five minute grace period. Okay. Um, I got a message back saying, I'll try to call them. I don't know what to tell you. Then what happened? At that point, I was like, I had been out there for about seven and a half minutes. So at that point, I just canceled the ride. Pastor, what time do you, do you recall canceling the ride? Objection, lead. Over roof. Um, it was around 5.30ish, okay. somewhere around there. And when someone requests request a ride and they don't appear, is there a charge then to that person? Objection, irrelevancy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a charge if they go past the five minute grace period. There is a charge. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Right. There may be some questions. Uh, any questions for this witness? Yes. Do you remember about what time the uh, call came in for the lift? 5.15. Call being uh, interviewed by any law enforcement in the days after uh, that night? Yes. And do you know if. Uh, do you know if that was by phone or, or in person? It was in person. Upon arriving at the uh, destination, you were supposed to be uh, giving a lift to someone. Do you recall uh, if there was uh, anything strange about the uh, the destination? Yeah, it was a closed building. There was no one out there, no cars in the parking lot. You said you canceled the ride around 5.30ish? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you recall what you did from that point? I took another fare. Same area or? Same area. You made you made reference to uh, someone telling you uh, something that wasn't true that was going on. Do you recall what that was? I do recall what that it was. Uh, my sister said that the school told my niece to stay in her dorm because there was an active shooting.
usually um does your lift app have a a profile picture attached to it no Do you recall um, when speaking to law enforcement something to the effect of referring to a profile picture or a description included in the profile? I recall saying that there was no profile picture. Are you able to see any phone numbers or contact information? I was not. You can't see that stuff on the app. Before you canceled the ride, do you recall the last uh, contact with the, the person who had set the lift up? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure sh they said, I don't know what to tell you when I told them that I didn't see anyone. And that was via text message? It's a chat through the app. And you say usually uh, even if it's uh, no pickup, there's a, a, a charge still associated with it? Yeah. Do you recall how many uh, requests you completed after that failed one? Approximately eight to 10. And you did state that you were not at the parade that, 
that evening, right? True. Okay. No further questions. Right, thank you. Any redirect? No. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. State may call its next witness, please. The state calls Daniel Ryder. Mr. Ryder, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Daniel Ryder, D-A-N-I-E-L-R-I-D-E-R. -E -E Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? I do. Where were you living back on November 21st of 2021? 553 Elizabeth Street. Were you living there, um, excuse me, were you home there that afternoon and early evening, that Sunday afternoon? I was. Was anybody else home with you? No. Can you describe what that residence looks like? Is it a single family house, multi-unit? What, what's it look like? There's yeah, it's a... Uh, um, overall, you may answer. Uh, it's a three, three or four bedroom house with two bathrooms. It's a Cape Cod style home, land and stone. Um, yeah, it's got a two and a half car garage. Okay. Do you know what Aries Industries is? Yeah. Where is Aries Industries in relation to the house you're describing? Objection leading. Overruled witness may answer. Yeah, Aries is right across the street from my house. That afternoon, November 21st, were you aware <coughs> that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Yes, I, I was aware of the parade. Did you attend the parade? No. Did you watch the Packer game? Uh, I did watch the Packer game earlier that day, but I was watching the um, Chiefs-Cowboys game that, uh, that evening. Or that I think it was afternoon. I don't know exactly what time it was, but do you recall what happened at approximately five o'clock p.m. that day? Objection leading. Overruled. He may answer. Yeah. So earlier that day, I was in my hometown Prairie du Chien for deer season, and then I drove back to Waukesha. Um, I got home in Waukesha. I went home in Waukesha around four o'clock, and I was watching the game. <laughs> and then uh, about five o'clock, my ring doorbell goes off. Uh, and then there's a gentleman at my front porch knocking on the door saying that they're homeless, they're cold, and they need to use my phone so that they can tell their Uber where to pick them up. What did that gentleman look like? Uh, he was a African American. Um, he had long hair and a beard. Um, Do you remember what he was wearing? Yeah, he had a uh, like a red t-shirt reddish orange t-shirt and no shoes on, pants. Um, but I remember it stood out to me because it was cold and really windy that day. And he was outside with, with a t-shirt and no shoes and saying he's really cold. So that stood out. You mentioned a few moments ago your ring doorbell. Is that a device affixed to your exterior uh, door frame? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, it's it's fixed to my, the outside of my porch, so not quite on the on the door, but just next door to the door. Yeah. It's okay. And does that capture video? Yes. Yeah. Leading. Overruled. Yes. What about audio? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. Did your Ring video doorbell capture the video and audio of your initial interaction with that gentleman on the afternoon of November twenty first? Objection leading. Overruled. The rig doorbell, when it senses motion, it takes a 20 second snippet and the 20 seconds that I got from the initial interaction was just 
um, the suspect coming up to my house and knocking on the door and saying he's homeless and needs help. I didn't get the verbal interaction that I had with him on cam on the ring doorbell because it only filmed 20 seconds. After the fact, so later that evening, did you speak with law enforcement? Yes. And did you subsequently at some point provide that 20 second ring video doorbell clip to a law enforcement officer? Yes. Did and you edit it in any way before sending it? Objection. No. Leading. No, and, and there was uh, four or five different snippets, not just the one 20 second snippet. So there was one, the initial interaction of him coming to the door, and then there was another one of him leaving and then an interaction there and then uh, the, the police coming to the door and him asking to come back inside the house when I wouldn't let him in. So there's there's four clips that I submitted, four or five that I submitted to the police. All right, let's work our way through those. Let's yeah. start, Your Honor, I'd ask that we please show exhibit number 75 for the witness only. Objection, rather than see. Overruled. Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? I do. What are we looking at here? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, this is Mr. Brooks coming up to my door. You said Mr. Brooks. Did you know his name at that time? Uh, not at the time, no. When did you learn that name? Uh, the officers were using it after the fact, so I don't know, what, 5.30 or so that day. Okay. Uh, does this appear to accurately depict your front porch as it looked uh, as that subject walked up to your door? Yes. And this is the video you sent to law enforcement that night or sometime after that night? Yes. Move exhibit 75 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 75 is received permission to publish. Granted. Objection. It's noted. Overruled. As we're waiting for that to pop up in the uh, jury box on their screens, I'll ask you, Mr. Ryder, do you see a date and timestamp on the bottom right-hand corner of this video? Objection, okay. leading. Overruled. I do. Is that a timestamp that's a feature of ring, or was that added after the fact? Objection. Overruled. Uh, it's a feature of ring. I didn't add that, yeah. And to your knowledge, does that timestamp appear to be accurate? Objection. Overruled. Speculative. Yes, that is accurate. For the record, though. Objection was overruled. This is a 20 second clip. I'm going to ask that we play it once with audio. Yeah, it says uh, November 21st, 2021, and the timestamp says 17.01, so 5.01 p.m. Okay. The voice we heard in that exhibit that we just played, whose voice is that? Objection, leading. Overruled. Objection. You may answer, sir. Uh, it's Mr. Brooks's voice. It's not yours? No. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that Mr. Brooks please be instructed to remove his face mask momentarily. Sir, would you please remove your face mask and face the witness? Was that a question of... The state's asked, there, sir, please remove your face mask and face the witness. I'm, just, I'm confused. He made a statement about the voice. Uh, um, um, he, the question's been asked and answered. Please what, remove your mask. What was the question? Please remove your mask and face the witness. Mr. Ryder, do you see the person depicted in exhibit number 75 in the courtroom today? Yes. 
Can you identify him for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? Uh, he's sitting at the table right there wearing a black suit and a gray striped tie. How does the record reflect that the witness has identified Mr. Brooks? The record will reflect that the witness has identified uh, the defendant as the person uh, depicted in this video and the person who was on his porch on November 21. Objection, Go ahead. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Go ahead, your next question, please. Thank you. What happened uh, in the moments after this video, the 20 seconds that were captured? Um, so he was on my porch for, I don't know exactly, a minute maybe, and he was telling me the interaction, or uh, he was telling me that he needed to use my phone to let his Uber know where to pick him up, and that he was homeless and cold, and um, he said he didn't have any weapons or anything on him, and he lifted his shirt real quick, and I was like, no, it's okay, you can use my phone, and um, I let him come inside and warm up. Uh, I just tend to believe people and I'm from a small town and we had people that need help all the time because we live right off a highway so I'm used to you know doesn't didn't phase me too much I mean I was nervous for sure but I was like yeah I can let use my phone and he made it sound like the uber was going to be here just any second just needed to know where to pick him up so I said yeah you can come and warm up while you wait for the uber and uh, I let him sit on the couch right by the window out front I said you can look out here waiting for your uber and he's on the phone most of the time after that with uh, his mom and uh, he's saying you know, the address 553 Elizabeth Street is where it needs to come and you know how far away is it kind of things like that but okay uh, I guess I, I guess is that what you're wondering or let me back up yeah. you made a motion with your hands there uh, regarding what Mr. Brooks said about not being armed can you, can you do that again just for anybody who missed it objection I don't know not to see you being called that name go ahead and again for the record yeah so I don't remember exactly what the motion was, I remember him saying he didn't have any weapons and he's um, not dangerous. And I think he lifted his shirt really quickly. But then I was like, ah, oh, don't worry, I'm not worried about that. And so I didn't, it's not like I patted him down or anything like that. But. Okay. Did you let him in the front door that would be right next to your video doorbell? The I actually. Leading. Oh. I can Go rephrase. Go ahead, rephrase. What door did you let Mr. Brooks into your home? I, I let him in the back door. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, you may answer. Yeah, the back door. Okay. So he went around the side of the house to get to the back door? That's right. Okay. What happened when he got to the back door? Mom. I don't remember exactly. I remember letting him in. Well, I remember, so I just got back hunting, so I asked him to go through the back door so I could make sure I didn't have any weapons laying around. And so I, after that was good, then I let him in the back door. It's more just to give me a second to make sure nothing was tempting or anything. But I let him in the back door, uh, and I think I gave him a coat right away, and then gave him my phone, and then uh, told him where to sit down. And when I told him to sit in the spot, he didn't move or anything. He stayed right there and listened to me. What else did you give him? I gave him a sandwich because he said he was homeless. Um, and I was, I said, oh, I can get you some slippers to put on your feet to warm your feet up. I never did end up giving him slippers. Uh, but yeah, so I gave him a jacket to wear while he was at my house. I gave him a spot to sit and wait for the Uber and a sandwich. You testified earlier that he was on the phone with his mom. How do you know that? Objection. Speculative. Overall. A few reasons. I heard him say mama a lot, and his mother called me and I didn't answer, but his mom called and left a voicemail after the fact, uh, confirming it. Whose phone was he using while he was inside your house? Objection. Will of Missy. He's using my personal cell phone. <coughs> How would you describe his demeanor as he was inside your house? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Um, I would say flustered, but also there were many times he was thanking me, and so he was grateful, and he even said, Thank you so much for showing me love, man. And he was calling me bro. And so it wasn't, I guess that didn't make me feel like I was in any danger at the moment. Did Mr. Brooks leave your home at some point? Objection. I don't concede to being called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer. Um, he, uh, I'm sorry, can you, I lost train of thought. Can you say it again? Did he leave your home at some point? Yeah, he uh, left when I asked him to. So he was in my house for eight or nine minutes and then 
Uh, I was standing on the front door looking outside because I was getting a little nervous because I thought the Uber would be there in a minute or two, not 10. And so after eight or nine minutes, I'm looking around outside and I see a police car drive by. And then I see another one coming down the street. And so I tell him, I say, hey, uh, I, we don't get a lot of police traffic on this street. And I'm getting nervous and this is just too weird of a situation. You're fine to wait for your Uber, but you need to do it outside of my house. And he was a little bit like, oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. And I said, no, you need to leave. And he, then he listened and got up. And uh, I've got video footage of that, of me escorting him outside of my house. He's still on the phone, and he's still got my jacket on. But I just said, you need to leave. Um, do, you, do you want me to say what I mean? Do you want me to keep going? Or? I just want you to answer my question. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's pause there, though. Sure. And show for the witness only, please, uh, exhibit number 77. We'll just uh, we'll play a few seconds of this without any audio, and actually, to save time authenticating, Your Honor, I think we'll do this with <coughs> the remaining three videos okay. we have. Go ahead. So this so, is uh, 70... 77, yep. 77. All right, thank you. We'll play a few seconds, please, without... Yeah, yep, there we go. Okay, we played four seconds from Exhibit 77. Do you recognize that clip? I do. And what is that? Uh, it was Mr. Brooks walking out first with a jacket on and me in a long sleeve shirt, a gray shirt, walking out behind him. Can we show for the witness only, please, Exhibit 78? Go ahead. We'll play the first couple of seconds of this one, too. played the first eight seconds of that. Did you recognize that clip? Yes. What does that show? That shows Mr. Brooks after I had him leave and get my phone and jacket. He was outside and then him asking to come back inside because he said he left his ID inside my house. And that was on the audio, um, but it sounded like he had the audio off for that. And we'll show you 79 now without any audio as well, just for the witness. <coughs> We played eight seconds of Exhibit 79. Do you recognize that video? Yep. What does it show? Uh, it shows an officer on my porch after the suspect was put into cuffs asking if I knew who the suspect was. Are Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 accurate depictions of your porch that night? Objection. Yes. Overruled. His answer may stand. Move exhibits 77, 78, and 79 into evidence and ask to publish all three, please. Objection. The objection is noted as to all three. It is overruled. Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 are received permission to publish. All three are granted. Okay, 77 is up now for everybody. It's a 21 second clip. We're going to play it once with audio, please. Before you do that, can we just confirm it's in the jury box? Not yet. Okay. Let me know. I guess while we're waiting, we can make use of this time. Mr. Ryder, could you read the time and date stamp for us on the bottom right-hand corner? Objection, relevancy. Overall, go ahead. Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, uh, 1710, so 5:10 p.m. Okay, we've got it up for the jurors. Let's play this once with audio. Do you see yourself in that video? Yes. What are you wearing in the video? A gray shirt. A gray shirt. Did you hear the wind in that video? Yes. 
What do you recall being said in that portion of the video? Jason Lee. Overruled. I'm walking Mr. Brooks outside of my house and my neighbor Greg says, are you guys looking for that guy? And I had no idea of anything at this point and so I say, I don't know, this might be him. Um, you can hear that in the audio. I don't know if anybody was able to distinguish that, but that's what was said. And then um, Mr. Brooks says, no, no, no. And then I say, can I have my phone, please? And then after that, I say, can I have my jacket, please? Did he provide those items to you? He did. Okay. Can we put up uh, for the jury, please, Exhibit 78? <coughs> this is a 20-second clip. We will play it once uh, with audio, please. Why me? Why me? Mr. Ryder, what happened during that video clip? Objection leading. Mr. Brooks, or I should say the suspect, came to my door, asked to come back inside to look for his ID. I said, no, I'll look for it. You stay out there. Um, and I was looking underneath the couch and everywhere that he sat for his ID when I hear the, the police officers saying, put your hands up. And Did you ever find the, uh, that person's ID? No. Did that person leave anything else in your side of your house? No. Flip-flops? No. Sweatshirt? No. Objection leading. Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase that last question. What, if anything else, did that suspect leave in your house? I don't. Objection leading. Overruled. He may answer. I didn't find anything left in my house. Okay. Can we please uh, show for the jury <coughs> exhibit 79? <79. coughs> Go ahead. <coughs> This is a 19 second clip. We will play it once, once with audio. Uh, hey, do you know this guy? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. We paused at 18 seconds. That's the police officer you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. Can you, just for the record, read for us the time and date stamp on the bottom right hand corner here at the 18 second mark of exhibit number 79? Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, and the time is 17 12 59 seconds, so 5 12 p.m. The video is a little bit blurry. Do you know where uh, Mr. Brooks is? At this point, objection leading, and I do not consent to being called that name. Overruled. The objection is noted. Uh, you may answer the question. Yeah, the suspect is on the east side of my walkway, on the northeast side of my house, in my yard. Um, if you see where those two police officer heads are, um, Mr. or the suspect is on the grass right there. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you. All right. Any cross? Yes. One, just one second. Okay. Will you be needing any of those videos to pick back up at any time? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment. Thank you. And before that, before that evening, you didn't know the guy that came to your house, correct? Correct. And so, why do you refer to why do you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? <laughs> because after the fact, the police officers and um, other people involved 
informed me of who the suspect was that was at my house that night. And it would be fair to say you had, uh, you captured where your ring uh, captured quite a little bit of video. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And did you turn over all the ring footage to law enforcement? I believe so. I mean, there was probably seven or eight other snippets of just officers coming in and out. I, I do believe I turned all that in, but nothing of evidence or anything. And were you aware that the ring footage was shown on social media platforms? I was aware, yes. Any idea how that came about? Protection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, Grounds. Overall, he may answer. Uh, yeah, I released it. And you released it. What, what do you explain what you mean by released it? Yeah, the news, uh, the news wanted the footage and um, I thought that this was good footage for this community and the victims to see some justice of the suspect put into cuffs, so I decided to release it. And were you, were you paid for that release? I was. So it would be fair to say that you profited off your ring footage? The incentive to release the footage was not to make money and we, we donated a lot of money of the money we did see off of it but yes we did do we did the money did make or the video did make money do you recall how many uh videos you released i believe it was four and you got paid for all four i don't know if it was paid for a per video basis or we we worked we were getting bombarded by the news so we did it we worked with the agent that then dealt with all the news people and we just got some off the back end so I don't exactly know how that works so would it be fair to say that you sold that footage yes And you stated that you were, um, while having this interaction, you were, you were a little nervous. Debbie, fair to say? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you were in any danger or just nervous? I never felt like I was in danger until I saw the police driving by. Then I did. But initially, your interaction, you didn't feel like you would be overtaken in any way? No, and the person at my door was very polite, so I didn't feel in danger. Testifies uh, to the to the effect that you had just arrived back home from hunting that that evening. That's correct. Well, not just arrived, but four o'clock probably got home about four fifteen.
at that time had you had you heard anything about what happened at the parade? No, I, all I knew was that there was a parade that day, but I had not heard of any incident happening at all. At any time during your, during your interaction with the suspect, did you notice any um, car keys? No. It's not to say he didn't have any on him, but I didn't notice any. You didn't notice any? That, nope. That'd be fair to say? Yep, that'd be fair to say. you notice any drug or alcohol? I didn't personally notice any drug or alcohol. Uh, I know there was some substance found on my porch after the fact, but I, I didn't I didn't notice. I, I think maybe I smelled a little bit of weed or something, but nothing stood out too much. And you stated that you gave the suspect uh, a jacket and a sandwich? Yes, sir. And was that due to um, the suspect saying that they were homeless and, and cold, or did you just take the initiative to do that? Um, I don't remember the suspect asking for food, but I do remember them saying multiple times that they were homeless and cold and needed help. And so I took the initiative to try to help any way I could in the moment. <clears throat> the, yeah, I think I offered the jacket and the sandwich. I don't think they ever asked for either one. And you let them use your phone, correct? Yes. And how do you know for sure who they were talking to? Because the number that they had called called me back and left a voicemail saying that they were the mother of the person that just called. Um, she said something to the effect of, hi, my, you just let my son use your phone. I'm calling back to figure out what's going on. And so that told me. And I did hear the suspect use mama when they were on the phone too. Did you um, follow up with that voicemail? Uh, I did not. Oh. Grounds. Overruled. May I just clarify the basis was, he didn't describe it as a voicemail? He did, he said he left I thought he did, but. Yeah. Anyway, the objection's overruled. Um, did you finish asking your question? You can, why don't you just ask it again? Um, did you uh, follow up with the caller that left the voicemail after that? I never called her back, no. She just left, called one time and left one voicemail. I did give the phone number to the police because they um, asked for it, so I gave them the number you had called and then told them about the voicemail calling me back but I didn't release that to anybody else other than the police. Do you recall uh, keeping that, that phone number in your call log at, after that? I, I believe it's still in my voicemail history, if that's what you're wondering. Even, even now? Even now, yeah. Any reason why you would keep it this long? Uh, it's just, I didn't per go out of my way to keep it. It just 
is on there. I don't get a lot of voicemails, so I, I checked this morning just to make sure it was on there, and it still is on the bottom of my list. So why would you check for it this morning? Because I thought maybe it'd come up today. I don't, I don't remember the exact number, but I still have the voicemail if, if I needed to bring that up. What led you to believe that it may come up this morning? Because I knew I knew I had to testify, but I didn't know what what exactly would come up or not. What do you mean by you knew you had to testify? Is that I got a subpoena and asked to come and share what happened at my house that day, and that was one of the things that happened. You seek so you seeked uh, testifying. Objection. Grounds. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. <clears throat> so you made reference to still keeping the voicemail. Did you uh, keep any of the ring footage? It's still on my phone, yes. Uh, you said it was like six or seven videos? I didn't keep anything past the officer coming up to my door after. Um, so I think I've got only four saved, maybe five. Any reason why you would keep those this long? I just haven't felt the need to get rid of them, I guess. I mean... It's that video is protecting me, you know, from being involved or anything. So I, there's no reason I would ever get rid of it. Would it be fair to say that you weren't involved in anything that, that evening? Other than trying to help somebody who I thought was in need, I was not involved in anything that evening. So why would you have any fear that the, uh, you may be implicated in anything in if you know that you weren't involved in anything? Because I had a suspect who had just done horrendous things come to my house and automatically people are going to think that maybe I had something or I knew you or something and I didn't. And so this is just validating that you told me you were homeless and some, and I was trying to help a stranger out when really... Sorry, what's the question? I mean, it would be fair to say that you you weren't arrested in any connection to any events that evening. Would that be fair to say? That'd be fair. To, I've never been arrested. And so my question would be, why would you think that you would be implicated in any way? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Next question. <clears throat> And how do you feel that the keeping of the videos would protect you from something that you don't need protection from? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. I think I misspoke when I said that it was protecting me because it's not necessarily protecting me. It's just something I haven't got rid of yet. Do you recall an uh, interaction with uh, law enforcement by the name of Officer Luling? I do.
do you recall emailing him uh, portions of the uh, ring footage? Yes. Do you recall how many portions? Maybe four or five. I, I don't remember exactly how many. So no, I can't recall that exactly how, how many I did. Do you recall if it was six? I don't recall. I'm assuming at some point that after escorting a suspect out of your house, you went back into your house? Yep. And what did you do from that point? When I escorted the suspect out and he gave me the jacket and the phone back, I went right inside, locked the door, and I don't remember exactly what I did. I think I stood in there and looked outside because I wanted to see whatever was going on, see either the suspect get into an Uber and leave or see um, the police get him in cuffs. And it was a matter of a minute later, you came, or the suspect came and was knocking on my door again to come back inside and look for the ID. When uh, when asking for your phone and your jacket back, did you was there any resistance on the part of the suspect, or did they just uh, maybe a few seconds to finish up their phone call, but they gave it back as soon as I asked for it. And you stated at one point going back in your house to look for the ID and wasn't able to find the ID? Yeah, the suspect came back after I escorted him out of my house, came back like about a minute later asking to come back inside and look for his ID. And I said, no, I'll look for it for you. So I was looking for his ID. I didn't let him back inside. And you didn't find any ID when you looked? No, I did not find any ID. Did you find anything unusual? No. After um, seeing uh, reports on the news and, and, and things of the like, did you come into any more information at that point? Objection. Grounds. Vague. Sustained us to the phone with a question. <clears throat> did you learn anything from news reports that you didn't know that evening? Uh, yes. After the fact, I learned of the suspect's criminal. Well, That's, I guess. Sorry. We're not going to go there. Okay. Um, I learned. The name of the suspect at my house, I learned what that suspect was put into cuffs for at my house, and I, I learned what vehicle he drove and the details of the incident. Did you observe the suspect in the vehicle at any time? Uh, no. 
Did you notice any vehicles parked in the area that you hadn't seen before? No. You made reference to uh, briefly speaking with neighbors at that time? Yeah, uh, when I was escorting the suspect out of my house, the neighbors said, are you guys looking for that guy? And up to that point, I had not, I had no information of a person that you should be looking for. So I said, no, this might be him. Do you know what they were referring to at that, at yeah. that moment? Yeah, my neighbor was at the parade, um, and he was talking about the person driving the vehicle through the parade. And you knew all that at that moment? No, I I didn't learn about that until the police told me after the fact. Um, I, di I didn't know what he was referring to when he said, are you guys looking for that guy? I didn't know anything about anything particular, but just that somebody's looking for a guy. And so then that's what led me to believe that the suspect be, in my house may be the person. It would be fair to say at that time, at that moment, you didn't know what they were referring to. That would be fair to say, correct. Did you have any other uh, interactions with those neighbors that evening? Yes. Uh, they called me after I got done doing my reports with the police, and I explained to them why there was so much police presence at my house afterwards and that um, that the suspect was arrested at my house or at my front porch. And did they at any time... Uh did they at any time say anything to you about seeing a vehicle or having knowledge of a vehicle at that time? Yeah, Greg, my next door neighbor, saw the red vehicle running over people. And he saw that? He told you that he saw that? Yeah. He told me after I had, I don't know exactly what time, maybe 6.30 p.m. that night when I called him after the fact after I knew what had happened, then Greg told me that he had seen what had happened. A lot of my neighbors were at the parade. Do you know if they gave any uh, reports to law enforcement at that time? I don't know that. The officers that arrested the suspect at your at your home that evening did. Did you see your neighbors speak with any of those law enforcement officers? I didn't see them, no. Speak with them, no. And you stated that they told you what they saw. Any reason why they wouldn't speak with law enforcement, seeing as how they were right there in the area? Objection. Grounds. All speculation. Sustained. So would it be safe to say you were pretty well informed that you would be testifying in this matter? Um, I didn't know. I knew that it was... Likely, I didn't know until I got the subpoena letter. And when did you receive that subpoena? I'm going to say September, maybe, maybe end of August. And that was received by, it was sent by the district attorney's office? Yes. You recall the name? No. After receiving the subpoena, did you uh, follow up with the district attorney's office? Um, they said that they would be emailing me with more details, and I waited until I got the initial email before I did any following up with the district attorney's office. And were those emails, were those emails uh, pertaining to testifying in this matter? Yes. Have you 
yourself filed any claims in this matter? Uh, no. Have you yourself seen or read any complaint in this matter? No. <laughs> Would you yourself can consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No. Are you aware of who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. <coughs> Sustained. Would it be fair to say that you followed the reporting on this incident? Uh, Initially, yeah, I was watched the news and followed the reporting on it. Uh, initially? Well, like, I, I'm, I haven't been following the trial, but I was following the initial reports back in November of last year. So pretty much right when the incident happened is what you followed? Correct. You know, the following week or so, or two weeks. You ever hear who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you yourself ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. <laughs> Grounds. Relevance. S sustained. Do you, are, do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Same Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall how much you sold the ring footage for? Objection. Grounds. <coughs> Relevance. Overruled. He may answer. I believe gross, it was a little over 23000 But after taxes, and we donated a lot, so we, we saw a lot less than that afterwards. Would it be fair to say that's quite a, quite a nice profit? Objection. Grounds. It, it's, Sustained it's us to the form of the question. And would that be the price just for one, uh, one of the ring footages, or in total, all, all that you sold? That was the total. Yeah. The four. I, like I said, I don't know how that worked. We, that was just the kickbacks that we got from working with the... So, yeah, I guess all of it, all four footage that was distributed to the news. Do you recall which station that was? Which news station? I mean, I think it was, like, most of the NBC, ABC... So it was multiple. CBS. Yeah, I mean, I don't recall all of them. No, I don't exactly which ones it was. I don't know. So it'd be fair to say it was pretty much the all the standard news stations. Yeah. Do you recall if that included TMZ? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Oh, sustained. You've made your point. You can move on.
No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Please. Thank you. Mr. Reiner, do you have your phone on you right now? Overruled. He may answer. I don't. I gave it to a gal that let me in here. She's got it, though. While we're waiting on that, you yeah. mentioned uh, you checked your phone this morning to confirm that you still have the voicemail we've been talking about, right? Yes. Well, it Overruled. You questioned him about it. It's proper. If we, I'm referring to, I'm referring to the use of the phone. What is the? We phone haven't now? gotten there yet, sir. You're premature. You may answer. You did check. Yeah, I did. If we were to provide your phone to you here today, do you think you'd be able to find that voicemail? Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Yes. Do you think you'd be able to play it on speakerphone for everybody to hear? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. Yeah, I can do that. Um, there's a way to also play it through the technology. Objection. What is the relevancy? Uh, can I have a bailout, please? You can unplug it from the charger. It's mm -hmm. probably to the witness. Objection. What is the relevancy? It's relevant, sir. You cross-examined him about it. Thank you. Yeah, I cross-examined him about the question, Mr. not Brooks. Playing the phone. Please, I made my ruling. So is that is that a judicial <laughs> determination? Huh. Go ahead. You may ask your next question, Attorney Witchell. Uh, please open up your phone and let me know when you find the voicemail. It's still pulling up right now. Sure. You followed instructions and turned your phone on, phone off before you came into court. Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Leading. Yes, I turned the phone off before court. Okay. Um, yeah. which I presume why he's loading that you're not offering the voicemail for the truth of the matter asserted, but simply to substantiate that he received a call. Yes. The jury will be instructed in terms of what is said in that voicemail not to consider it for the truth of the matter asserted, but just simply to substantiate the voicemail was received. And part of that request, Judge, would be to include the time that the voicemail was left and the number from which it came. Okay, objection, what is the relevancy of that? Um, the objections noted, and you may ask the witness those questions. You might as well ask about the videos too. Then. We'll get to those. How much longer do you have? With five, five minutes. Right. Well, I don't know how long this voicemail is. With that caveat. All right. Please continue. It's okay. Twenty-nine second voicemail. Okay. Dude. Can you tell us uh, what phone number that voicemail came from? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. He may answer. The voicemail came from one, so, so plus one or whatever, so 414-610-2153. Can you tell us what time that voicemail came in? Yeah. Okay. Overruled, he may answer. 527 p.m. On November 21st. Of 2021? Of 2021. Objection leading. Overruled, his answer may stand. And Your Honor, at this point, I'd ask uh, to allow the witness to play that voicemail using speakerphone. And if that doesn't work great with the audio system, then we can try the, the plugging in option. Sure. Once again, the jury, again, will only consider this not for the truth of the matter of what's asserted in that voicemail, uh, but simply to substantiate that it was received. Go ahead. Objection. Noted. Overruled. This is Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who used your phone. And, oh, sorry. Uh, Should I rest I'll restart it. I was using the wrong this mic. This is Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who you let use your phone. And he's calling. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to see if he got the lift or what because the guy is in a white guy charger. I can apparently the lift driver switch cars and I didn't get the message. 
So I'm just trying to find out what the hell is going on. So I just, just want someone to just call me and tell me something because I don't know. <clears throat> And that's the end of the voicemail? Yes. And you didn't uh, contact the person who called you and left that voicemail after the fact, did you? Objection. The action answered. Oh, overruled. He may answer. No, I never, I never contacted her. Okay. The videos that we played in court today, those four videos, exhibit 75, 77, 78, and 79. You turned all those videos over to the police. Is that correct? Objection. The... Um, sustained us to the form of the question. To whom did you turn those four videos over? Uh, I emailed them to Officer, I believe it was Officer Lilling. There was a Rebecca Carpenter out of Eagle PD that wanted it. And I may have emailed it to somebody with West Dallas PD. Uh, but for sure, Waukesha Police Department all got it that night. And while you've got your phone in front of you, are you able to access your call log? Um, yeah. Objection Lee. Overruled. Can you go back to November 21st of 2021? Okay. Um, can you see what number Mr. Brooks dialed that day using your phone? Objection Lee. Overruled. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, so my call log didn't save back that far. My voicemails did, but my call log, I've made so many calls since then that it didn't, I didn't save that. I think, that. I think the police definitely saved that number when they were at my house that night, though. Do you recall if it was the same phone number that you received that voicemail from? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. I don't recall for sure, no. Okay. The videos that you released to the media... Did you release anything to the media that you didn't also provide to the police? Objection. Overruled. No, everything that was released to the media was already released to the police department. Did you alter those videos or the audio that goes with them in any way when you released them to the media? Objection, you're saying. Overruled. No, I never altered any of them. What about when you sent them to the police? Objection, leading. Overruled. No, never altered them. Were you aware at the time that Ring is a, a subscription service? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, we pay a subscription for it. And there's a cloud account that goes with that, is that right? Objection, leading. S um, sustained us to the form of the question. I think this is a pretty foundational question necessary well, to develop the testimony. You're probably right, and there is, it can be, some leading questions all, are allowed, but just rephrase that one, please, and we'll go from there. Okay. Where do the videos go aside from your phone? Objection, speculative. Overruled. Um, there, there's an app on my phone that I was able to save and download off the app onto my phone. So there might be, a, I'm pretty sure that there's a Ring Cloud, that Ring, mm -hmm. the company Ring can probably access the footage, but I, I'm not, I was never notified that they had access to it or anything like that. If someone did want to access those videos through Ring, were you aware at the time that someone would have been able to double check and make sure that you didn't fudge with that video? Objection, Lee. Um, overruled if you're able to answer. Um, yeah, I mean, Ring could, if we needed to get Ring to validate that it's, if, that it's correct, they would be able to do that. Okay. When Mr. Brooks first knocked on your door, were you planning to sell those videos? Objection. I don't consent to being called in name. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection, speculative. It's not speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay. Go ahead. Uh, no, I had, I had no idea what was going to happen after that. What about after you let him in the back door and gave him a sandwich and a jacket? Were you, was Objection. this all part of a plan at that point? Objection, leading. Overruled, he may answer. No, there's no plan to, to get footage to sell or anything like that, no. You simply provided those videos to law enforcement and the media. Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I don't have anything yeah, else. After the fact. All right. Thank you. Uh, you may step down. It's a little after 12, 12.09. Uh, we will take our uh, lunch break. Uh, we went a little bit longer, uh, so I'm going to take um, about a 90-minute lunch break uh, today. 
So all rise for the jury. We are in recess. I'll see everyone at about 140.